Welcome to the Travis Masterbone Podcast. I am your host, Travis Masterbone, talking some shit to impact your life. This is episode 13, titled Divorce and Defining Love. Quote, true love is your soul's recognition of its counterpoint in another. End quote. Owen Wilson from Wedding Crashers Classic. Um, it is no secret If you didn't know by now, I recently went through a divorce this last year. Um, Definitely a lot of ups and downs, self-reflection, and this episode has been long overdue. I've been procrastinating, to say the least, because there's so many directions I can go with it, specifically in defining love. Uh, It's all over the map, and depending on which book you pick up or who you listen to, and the experiences in your life, no matter what, it's all relative, and everyone has their own perception and way to define it. But for me, you know, the divorce was eye-opening. Um, if you must know, I am the culprit. I committed infidelity. And moving forward and really analyzing what I did in the past, it's really been a challenge because... You know, moving forward is very difficult no matter what. It's never easy separating from someone, especially when you spend so much time with them. So moving forward is always difficult in the early stages. I feel like I've reached a pretty good point in my life right now with all the learning and self-reflection and therapy. Um, But it's important that even in the culprit's shoes, you have to learn how to forgive yourself and not beat yourself up and look too deep into the past. And I'm a big fan of if two parties are genuinely unhappy and they genuinely want to separate, then I'm okay with divorce. This is very contrary to traditionalists, and I I understand. You should do anything and everything in your power to try and patch things up, especially if it's someone you love. Growing up, we've all been so brainwashed with this Disney movie, um, Happily Ever Ever After, fairy tale perception of love. But it's very difficult. There's a lot of ups and downs. It's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies. And working through it, there's always going to be issues. There's always going to be something with this person, especially if you've lived with them for a lot of years, they're going to get on your fucking nerves. And there's going to be things that you're going to discover about them. We all keep growing. So you yourself, you're going to be doing things that pisses off your significant other. And it's just a matter of how much you want to tolerate and really weighing all the pros and cons. If there are people out there who have just 100% pros for their significant other, then hats off to you. But I think that's the exception. In my example, in my marriage, there was a lot of things that we could have fixed. And I chose the easy route to escape. You know, once you cheat, it's very difficult to get that trust back. That is the epitome of distrust. And so once you go down that road, it wasn't in my hands anymore. It was up to her. Was she willing to work through it? I didn't jump the gun right away when I came clean. I came clean and admitted what I did. And she was she was expecting me to get on my knees and beg her for forgiveness. I like to think a lot. In fact, sometimes I overthink. It might be one of my downfalls. But for the most part, I wanted to think about why I did what I did. What was going on in my relationship? Deeply. On a day-to-day basis? Was I feeling respected? Did this woman really love me? Did I really love her? There was a lot of questions that I wanted answered. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity. It may have seemed a little premeditated that we were moving out of our apartment into a house. And in my mind, I thought, okay, maybe we can take this opportunity where I go in the house for a month or so and self-reflect and figure my shit out. And we revisit 
and maybe try to work it out and go to therapy. And I do all the things that she wants me to do to try and earn her trust back, which who knows, that might not ever happen, you know. But she didn't accept that. And that's okay. That's her prerogative. She made the decision to file. We were supposed to talk and we didn't for months. It wasn't until recently when I bumped into her where we actually officially had some closure. She moved on quite quickly. And in the moment when you bump into someone like that, all the memories kind of flood back into your brain really quickly. So it's tough. There's a part of me that understands why she ghosted me for so long and didn't want any interaction. Maybe she was afraid that if she saw me, she would crumble and take me back. There was a possibility of that. I saw her and I begged her to take me back. But she moved on already. Made me think a little bit. When she said no, I kind of accepted that. That was my true, true reality check and closure that it was time to move on officially. Now, in regards to moving on, I haven't necessarily been alone alone completely over this last year. You know, there's always been one other person that's been on my mind, and it's a big reason why I'm really trying to tackle this definition of love. I'm caught between these two women, alone in my head, alone in this house. Like there's no other women, no other fish in the sea, right? But it's so true when you experience so much loneliness, you start to really dig deep. You know, God forbid, and knock on wood, what if these women died? You know, what would I do? How would I move forward? And my ex-wife would always say all the time, and I always thought it was kind of cliche, like, okay, no shit. You can't love someone else without loving yourself. But it's true. So I started to date myself a little bit. There was a gap where I got to separate a little bit from, we'll call her the rebound chick. And in that time frame, I really was trying to hone in and figure out what is it that makes me happy in general, how to be alone, and then what am I looking for in a partner? Do I even want to be married again? And I really did think about this. And I did come to a conclusion. I do want to be married again. I want to give it a shot again. And I know for a fact I will not cheat again. Because it rotted away at my soul. Knowing in the back of my head. That I have committed infidelity. And I'm just basically suppressing it. Trying to be normal. While I was married Hence why I came clean. It just kept rotting and rotting and I just had to step forward with it. And so I want to give it a shot again. My my marriage was a little unorthodox. It was rushed. I didn't do the on one knee proposal. There was no big wedding or honeymoon. So it was a little different. Maybe that plays a role. Maybe it doesn't. But over time, I, what I realize is I do want a woman that respects me and that truly, truly cares about me. And so we'll throw this word love into the mix. You know, everyone wants somebody that loves them. We don't want to just keep chasing somebody that we love and they just never reciprocate. And for me, I just never really felt the reciprocation deep in my soul. I felt like we were going through the motions. We were good business partners. We split everything and we both had our own agendas. And, you know, every once in a while we got romantic. And that's it. There wasn't a lot of depth to it. And I think a big, big reality check where I knew I was checked out was when she had a scare of getting pregnant. And the first thought in my mind was, oh, hell no. <laughs> I don't want that. And then, of course, I check myself like, damn, do I really feel that way? Should I really feel that way 
about my wife. Of course, I brushed it off, moved forward, continuing, continuing with suppressing what I've done in the past, the guilt. But something wasn't there. And, you know, I never really gave therapy a chance. That could have been something that could have been fixed. So back to the loving self. You know, maybe it was me. It could have been me. Maybe I wasn't loving myself. Maybe I wasn't appreciating her. And I have this weird, um, you know, perception or idea of what's going on. But without communication, we didn't really have communication. And so therapy could have helped that. And maybe would have, we would have alleviated a lot of the little things that I, little issues that I had with the relationship. But instead, as I said earlier, I took the easy way out. And so... With all that ranting and jibber-jabber and bitching and complaining about my previous relationship, um, I can honestly say I'm in a very, very great place. Like, I am okay with her moving on, me moving on, and not giving it a shot again. And not just because (laughs) she denied me, but for, you know, my own conscience. But moving forward... Now I have to really tackle, okay, how do I continually love myself and what exactly am I looking for moving forward? When it comes to this word love, I loved my dad. I love my aunt, my cousin, her girlfriend, my stepmom. I love my friends and I used to love the game of basketball. And when I think of this word in all of these examples, it's like no matter what, when I think of it, it's nothing but positivity. When I think of these people or I think of basketball, it's just positive thoughts. And it's something that I just on a day-to-day basis would be okay Um, you know, having affection towards it. Basketball, I was obsessed every day. But it wasn't all ups. You know, there was times where I felt frustrated when I was just shooting by myself. There was times I was frustrated when I played in games and lost or fucked up. I cried a lot over that game. It was something different deep and very difficult to explain something in the ethos not tangible it was just deep but I kept going and I kept kept going it just something about it just makes you want to keep giving it a shot keep trying keep moving forward and sure enough those great great thrilling times really occur as for like my father and family and friends you know my dad I I would have done anything for that man, you know? And he would have done the same for me. It was like the purest love I think I've ever had in my life. And, you know, it it eats me up every day. There's not a day that goes by where I don't think about him. He passed away. Shit. Coming up on 11 years, 12 years. My goodness. Where does the time go moving forward? And the same thing goes with my family. And the same thing goes with my friends. If anyone really ever needed me, I would be there without hesitation. I don't ignore them. You know, I get everyone lives their own lives and has their own agendas. But, you know, something about love, too, is just, you know, sometimes being brutally honest. Right? If something, if you feel like someone's off track You don't fluff it. You don't sugarcoat it. I don't think the white lies help anything for the people you love. You know, tell it like it is because you want them to improve. A lot of my favorite coaches, they showed me the toughest of love. But it got me better and put me in a better place. But we can't shoot for this unrealistic fairy tale happily ever after perception you know there's gonna be trials and tribulations 
So as for moving forward, how I'm looking at love with someone romantically, um, I've, I've felt it. I felt it in previous relationships. And what's ironic is, and I'm sure many of you can relate, in the moment, you can think deeply. <laughs> you could be so convinced that you're in love with this girl. I've tripped over this many times in my past with previous girlfriends. In the moment, you could have swore <laughs> you were in love. But then as time goes on, you know, you shrug, you move on. You learn the lessons. For me, I'm so critical of myself. I always think like, okay, like that chick was crazy, but what could I have done better? How could I have been a better man? Where can I improve? I always look at myself first, no matter what. And I feel like I'm battling it right now with someone. And my aunt always tells me like, you know, be patient and be kind And it's so true. Everyone has their own self-interest. That's without a doubt. We're humans. And I think that's human nature. But patience is one of the most important things. And if someone you love does something that bugs you or does something that crosses you a certain way, if you love them, you should have patience and forgiveness and acceptance. But again, it's all relative. You know, everyone has that line where once it's crossed, just like my ex-wife, there's no going back. So that's why it's tough to define. But for me and myself, it really depends. Especially when it comes to these fucking love languages. I'm not entirely sure how to answer that when they say, what's your love language? Shit, I don't know. It depends on who the person is. Because the wrong person, if my love language is uh, words of affirmations... The wrong person can say all the right things to me, and I'm just not feeling it. Don't know why, don't know how. Something in the ethos. Physical love, gifts. I mean, deep down, I truly, truly feel quality of time is probably, you know, the leader in that pack. But it's obviously a combo of it all, just percentages, but it really depends on who the other person is. But with all of that, you know... I'm not going to sit here with all my check boxes. Like, she's got to be this, she's got to be that, she's got to be this, she's got to be that. Certain height, certain race, certain profession. You know, I, I don't do that. I don't like putting the restrictions. They call them the non-negotiables. Because sometimes they can have a lot of boxes not checked off. But there's just something between you two that's deeper than that. And I just always, now that I've gone through the divorce and really worked on myself and tried to reflect and be critical on myself, maybe I'm just a little empathetic or too empathetic or too accepting of the other party. You know, I understand that they have issues and childhood tribulations and traumas. And so I like helping people in general. And so I always bring that to the table when it comes to girls and relationships and dating. And so sometimes it could get the best of me. And I'm a nice guy, or at least I think I am. (laughs) And so sometimes maybe that could be an issue as well. Maybe I get walked on a little bit more often than not. But one thing's for certain. Being patient with the person you love, it's a big foundation, right? And then being kind to them. Again, when I said earlier, if someone is beating them or even mentally abusing them, the worst things ever, it's okay for two people to separate when it gets really that dire and ugly. But if you're dating, taking things slow, really trying to understand who they are, Sex can really get in the way. And sometimes that really, the lust blocks who the person really is and what you're trying to learn from them. And then all you got to do is live with them and uh, the realities will set in. I'm not entirely sure if 
in this episode, I did a good job of defining love. But how I do it, or how I'm going to do it moving forward, is if somebody has my attention the way basketball did, and if somebody has the level of care the way I had it for my dad and my family members and friends, and then the romantic side of things is just easy and just smooth and natural. And and if you can hang out with this person without the sex, talk with them for hours, hang out with them and do anything and everything under the sun, you know, that to me is a good, good indicator that this might be someone that you love. And you have to be mature enough as an individual to realize that they are going to have their issues as well. And you just hope and pray that they fix them, you know, fix their issues themselves. You're not there to change them. That's pretty cliche, right? You can't change them. But I don't see a problem in assisting or helping. If there's something that they're not aware of that, hey, you do this. Hey, you've been doing this. Do you know that you're doing this? And giving them tips and pointers and advice. I don't think that's really a problem. I don't think that's you trying to fix them in a negative way. I think, you know, it's no different than my coaches showing me some tough love, but it's not really the toughest thing. It could be something very simple. And also another pillar of love is just being able to communicate. You know, being honest and communicating. And then I guess the the biggest pillar of all, a lesson that I've learned from my infidelity, is faithfulness. Especially in this world, it is tough. There's always going to be options out there. And, and that's the thing. There's always going to be other fish in the sea. Can you control yourself and settle down with someone who really does check off all the boxes and does all the things that I just ranted about right now? Like that to me is special if someone can do that. And that's coming from the culprit who hopefully has learned their lesson. But someone who's willing to stick it out with you, no matter what. You know, the person that I love, I'm going to be bedside if you have cancer. If something happens to you, because there will be that day, illness will come around the corner. Whether it's you, your significant other, your family, your friends, you are going to deal with that. And so the person you love, it is unconditional. Unconditional. You tolerate the flaws of this person. And you are understanding that no one's perfect. And then you will just do anything and everything to be in their lives in a kind, patient manner. And especially in times of illness and lows are you there by their side when they are at their their lowest and can you be there in a non-selfish manner and not just throw money at them you know and not just want sex but something deeper i say it all the time born alone die alone but i'm basically just referring to like you got to get your shit together and make yourself happy and prepare for the possibility that you will be alone. So that's what I mean by that. But in no way, shape, or form does it mean don't try to get close to somebody. I'm not afraid to love somebody else moving forward. I'm not. And that's just who I am. And honestly, there's just... I'm only 34 years old. I'm probably going to learn a lot more lessons over the next 30, 40 years. And it is what it is. I hope you got something out of this. This by far was my most off the top, not structured rant episode yet. But like I said earlier, it's been long overdue to just kind of talk a little bit about my divorce 
how I moved forward, where I'm at now, and this fucking word love. Best of luck to everybody. I truly do wish and hope everyone finds somebody that they love and they love them back. So please like, share, subscribe, all that shit. And thank you for tuning in to the Travis Masterbone podcast. And I look forward to you tuning in next time. Farewell.